What's he have to apologize for? <laughs> Who? Roger needs to apologize before anyone's going to forgive him for shit. Okay. Do you think he ever will? No, he's never going to. That's why it's a meaningless conversation. What is up, freaks? Welcome back to Tales from the Crypt. It's your boy, Marty. Sitting now with Matt discussing forgiveness uh, before we get to jump into this episode of Rabbit Hole Recap. You know, I don't know if I'd ever forgive either, but that's the beauty of Bitcoin. You don't have to. Yeah, they can use it. No one can stop them. Yeah. That's what's beautiful about it. Speaking of Bitcoin, the price of Bitcoin right now is sitting at $7,581.41. Pretty volatile the last few hours. Uh, according to the uh, trade block XBX index, sitting at black 579,565, according to my node right here. And my mempool has 557 transactions in it right now. About one megabyte worth of transactions. Uh, we got a lot to talk about this week. Popping week. How you feeling today, Matt? I love the mempool readout. That's a new one. It's yeah. good. Yeah. You know, I got to let the freaks know. Um, mempool was empty last night, about 17 hours ago. You've been mempool watching? Been mempool watching. Yeah. You know, I gotta, gotta, haven't been sending any transactions. Just, just observing. Um, before we hop into the topics of the day, this episode is brought to you by the Cash App. You freaks already know all about them. The number one app. Uh, in the finance sector for the last two years in the app stores, there's only two, Google or Apple uh, app stores. With the Cash App, you freaks already know they're helping us stack sats. The first P2P payments app to allow you freaks to buy Bitcoin. You can easily stack sats, send them to a personal wallet when you're ready and have gotten all your verification done. And then on top of that, they have the Boost program. Send you a card. Do it up with your own signature. Really, this is your time to shine, freaks. This is when you show a little bit of your personality, what, what you got to bring to the world. Make your own signature, your own sign. You can go full prints on, on their asses if you want to um, with the boost card. And then you go to merchants like Chick-fil-A, Whole Foods, coffee shops, Panera, Taco Bell. The list goes on. Use the boost card there. Save a little bit of money and stack some more sets. Again, go to your local uh, podcasting excuse me, podcasting, your local app store, the Google or uh, Apple app store. And then obviously our second sponsor this week is Unchained Capital, uh, their vault program. In particular, if you guys sign up now, you're going to get three months free of the Savedina Moose Research Bulletin. Uh, and obviously you're going to test out their vault program, which is a two or three multi-sig. You can use your ledger, your treasure, and you can keep control of your keys at all time. You have control of two or three. You can move your Bitcoin whenever you want. If you ever need Unchained to come into the picture and sign that second key of that two or three scheme, they will come in there for you. And then on top of that, they're going to let you access loans, uh, U.S. dollar loans via the vaults going forward. So check out uh, those vaults at www.unchained-capital.com slash vaults. Matt, that was a lot of ad read there. (laughs) It was indeed. Um, I... Talking about the mempool, I realized that people were talking about on Twitter, they were talking about Cash App not giving you fee selection when you withdraw. They just eat, they just pay the fee. Cash App just pays the fee for you. Yeah, they're eating that fee. So it should be interesting as if, as if, as fees go up, which they inevitably will, um, how quick they'll change that policy. Yeah. I'm sure they're thinking that. I'm sure that's on the roadmap. If they, uh, the team's smart, they should be thinking of that. Cause Hey, in U.S. dollar terms, fees will probably go up. I mean, but that's great for people who are, you know, stacking sats and worried about transaction fee costs. So just something to note. Yes, definitely take note of that this week. Uh, should, we, should we talk about San Francisco first? Oh, I'm so fucking pumped. Yeah, so uh, we officially locked down. We're going to end uh, the Bitcoin 2009 conference being held by BTC Media, Bitcoin Magazine, that crew. Uh, it looks like Matt and I are going to uh, end that conference out with a rabbit hole recap, a live recording, our second live recording ever. Uh, We're pumped. We're going to do it on the rooftop there. We'll be drinking fun vibes. Uh, I'm sure everybody at the conference will be tired, so we'll try to end it on a a high note there. It's going to be such an awesome time. I'm so excited. Yeah. Um, You know, last time we did a live recording, the price went up 3x in five months. It's true. So this is a, this is a, a very seminal event. We we only do these very every so often when when the Bitcoin when Bitcoin needs needs a sacrifice of a live recording, um, so we're here to do it again. Last time five drink Matt came out. We'll see if he comes out this time around. Uh, I think I think people like when five drink Matt comes out on the live stage. 
He kept going afterwards too. <laughs> um, speaking of being drunk, it seems like uh, the kick team was drunk when they were when they were emailing and talking about why they were they were launching an ICO. So the uh, we talked about this last week. Um, the kick has officially been. Yeah, they hadn't gotten they hadn't the suit hadn't been placed. Yeah, yet. they had not been sued, but this week the SEC officially sued them uh in the the court proceedings and the documentation that came with the uh with the suit uh, highlighted a bunch of internal emails and communications that the kick team had leading up to the ICO and it was pretty egregious that it was a cash grab of a of a faltering startup that was hitting the tail end of its runway of uh its its initial VC money money raising so uh, a couple of the defend crypto partners uh, have dropped out uh, since taking their their association off off the website coinbase being one of them i forget the other circle circle being the other uh, ripple uh, hilariously is now on the defend crypto website no it's, it's not ripple i don't think i think it's arrington arrington capital right oh arrington capital i'm sorry yeah which is ripple capital or something right xrp it, arrington some derivative some subsidiary yeah. Um, I think it says Ripple in the name, though. It's denominated in Ripple. Yeah, so it seems like, uh, I mean, I read the court, or at least excerpts from the court docs. It seems pretty egregious to me that uh, the way Kik was marketed, or Kin, the token that Kik launched, was marketed was uh, something that you uh, would invest in and would accrue in value, like the basically perfectly described as security in some of their emails and, and marketing material. I mean, it was really bold of them to try this. Um, you know, I, I think that the SEC should stay out of it. I, I, I think it's not mutual. You can think that they both can go fuck themselves. It's not mutually exclusive. Um, and can, you know, can go to hell. I, they're obviously not defending crypto. Um, and I, I think it's funny that people are pulling support. Because we immediately, you know, saw through what it was last week before the... They obviously didn't realize how bad this bad the case was going to be. No, and it's... Um, what will be interesting to see is who gets dragged into it. Obviously, you have USV, who's involved. Yeah, Union Square extent. Ventures. Coin Fund. Fred Wilson. Coin Fund, which is around the corner. So many, so many were involved it. in this one. So this is... Uh, yes, whether you... Again, we're we're not here to. I mean, we definitely have our own opinions, and oh, do we? I, I have my. I mean, I do not care for Kick. I think what they did it was scummy. It was uh, trying to exploit an easy money grab. It was pretty obvious. And at this point, and again, like you said last week, to claim that they're the the number one used blockchain in the world, it's just the egregious. most used <laughs> cryptocurrency in the world, just an egregious lie. Uh, you know, Fred Wilson's line was one of the most used. And then T Ted Livingston said the most used. So they're both definitely both wrong. But at least, you know, Fred covered himself a little bit. Yes. But with that being said, like. Uh, I don't like the SEC is stepping in, whether we like it or not, we would prefer that that this thing just go away yeah, but and it was expected of course yeah of so course they were going to come involved so they are out. involved now and we're going to find out who gets dragged in and what precedents get set so this is whether you like it or not whether you want to defend crypto or not the there will be precedents set here it seems uh and it'll be interesting to see who gets caught in in the crossfire yeah i mean i feel like this is probably just the beginning it should be it should be interesting to watch play out Oh, and they've raised like no money. They they seeded it with like their their five million. Remember, like two million mm -hmm. in ETH, two million in Bitcoin, uh, and a million dollars in Kin. Uh, I think they received like two thousand dollars or something like that. Yeah, something. And it, the value has gone down because it's crashed since the lawsuit. So. <laughs> it's uh, yeah. So it doesn't seem like many people want to defend crypto with that team again. Like like we said last week, like that's a tough uh, a tough quote-unquote industry leader to, to go into battle with the SEC li with. Yeah, I mean, Fred Wilson said that he personally donated to defend crypto. So, like, he didn't donate that much. If it's, like, total... I don't know. Anyway. Yeah. Um, they they see It seems like they're fucked, and I don't know why they wouldn't want to settle. 
Uh, it seems like they had the opportunity to settle. Uh, none of it really makes sense to me. So we will, you know, watch it play out. But uh, it's worth reiterating that the whole point of Bitcoin is is that an SEC lawsuit couldn't, you know, take it down. But these centralized, these centralized coins are super easy to take down. You just need one legal action. Yeah, it's uh, it's why we're lucky Satoshi left. There's no central figure. They're lucky, sort of. It, it's taken a while for the regulators to even come to understand this technology, and uh, I don't think we're completely out of the woods yet. But Bitcoin's probably the most, the best position to to succeed uh, on its path towards uh, robust decentralization and therefore uh, protection against the state. I mean, I feel like we have like we also have like all this political cover from all the altcoins. Um, you know, like who they're going to go after first? They go after Kin first, right? Then see, they go uh, after Tron. Then see they... Andrew Yang with uh, Char- uh, Charlie Lay. Yeah, I did. Charlie is such an innovator. I um, such an innovator. I couldn't help but be impressed. I was, <laughs> I was, I was, I was pretty, I was pretty impressed. Did anyone check if if Litecoin price went up? Uh, let's check. Right I mean, now. like the listeners know how I feel. Um, on that respect, but I was, I, mean, I chuckled when I saw it. To innovate, just to change the, the script. Are uh, you on like cut the block time in a court <laughs> by four? Uh, increase the supply by four. Like it's very innovative. Like, what did the tweet say? <laughs> I just said uh, it was great meeting you. He didn't tag Litecoin in it, right? No, he tagged yeah. Char- Satoshi Light. Um, Satoshi Light. It was great meeting Satoshi Light, and then they had like a picture of them standing next to each other. Yeah, something about being an innovator. Um, yeah. Did right. the price go up? Um, no. This was like today. The price has gone down. Or it's flat. Did it? Did the Yang thing happen yesterday or today? Uh, I'm not positive. Either way, it's like flat, flat to down. Um. Oh, by the way, if you do, or if you, if you do plan on buying tickets to San Francisco, our we have, our discount code is TFTC twenty five. You get twenty five percent off. TFT, ooh, TFTC twenty five. Make sure you use it. We're a very uh, low time preference here. We want you to save as many <laughs> U.S. dollars as you can, so you can stack more sets. Uh, TFTC twenty five. Uh, First 100-person coin join. We talked about it almost happening a couple weeks ago. Yeah, you were right. It, I thought one had already happened, but you were right. It hadn't happened. Um, but now it officially happened. Uh, so it's becoming more uh, the was- this Wasabi coin join, I'm assuming. Yes, it was Wasabi. Yeah. Um, so Wasabi is becoming more, more, uh, more volume coming on the Wasabi, more liquidity, more potential pairs to join. 100, though, it's still rookie numbers, right? I think there's I think there's a cap on a hundred for some reason. Is there? I think there's. I think that's I I'm not sure if they can go higher than that, but uh, I might be wrong. But anyway, a hundred's great. Uh, as more people use it, we'll be able to hit that number more times. Um, obviously, the more people that are involved in each round, the better it is. Yeah, and. This goes hand in hand with our next topic, which is 6102's Bitcoin HODL privacy. Um, oh, this was great. Yeah, 6102 Bitcoin on Twitter uh, put together this quick little overview. Um, different ways you can leak your privacy that people don't think about, you know, like going on a block explorer and looking up an address. And um, the one we've been talking about a lot, you know, if you use, you know, Trezor or Ledger's uh in-house wallets that they use their servers so you leak your keys that way and he tells you like different precautions you can take and stuff like that yeah and that yeah and it's again it's not easy yeah there's a lot of boxes you have to check off before having confidence that you're transacting completely uh in private or with as much privacy as you're expecting um one thing what is the open source explorer technology call from Blockstream. Is it L2? No. Explora. Explora. Yeah, so yeah. Blockstream, they open source their uh, their Block Explorer stuff. So if you want to create like a local Block you Explorer. Don't even, you don't even have to go that far. Like, I mean, that'd be great. But, it, but you can also just... 
first of all, blockstream.info says they aren't tracking you, but like, you know, you have to trust them in that regard. Second of all, you can connect to them through Tor. Or if that's still too much for you, like you can just get a VPN and connect through a VPN. Um, and then that's better than, than not. Like a, a sh- one of those shared VPNs, like a Mulvad or something like that. Yeah, that as well. And if you want to go completely like hardcore cypherpunk, you can like use the Explora open source stuff, make your own. No, yeah, I agree. And I, I think Noddle is going to put on a Black Explorer too, which should be pretty dope. Yeah. Um, I just don't want to... I, one of the nice things about this is he tells you like simple, he, t- he tells you like simple solutions. He says, use Tor, use, you know, use the Tor browser, use the browser plugins. So it's, it, so people shouldn't feel overwhelmed. You know, there's no such thing as perfect privacy at any time you can leak, leak it. So it's just like a constant battle just to like be more private. You have to just like, um, but the, every little thing you do helps. You know, so don't get discouraged because you think you can't do it perfectly. No one can do it perfectly. Yeah. Yeah, but it is. um, You think this is all going to get easier? Yeah, but it's never going to be easy. No. I don't think. That's something we harp on a lot. Um, But anyway, we'll post a link to this overview. I just thought it was a good idea to uh, chat on that. Yeah. No, Wasabi Wednesday still still rolling on. Uh, uh, they're rolling strong. Yeah, bull Bitcoin's officially turned on. Doing that. Um, so yeah, coin join if you can. It's getting easier. They're making it easier with the hardware wallets. They now have the pin. Did we talk about that last week? What? Uh, for the, the yeah the Treasure One. Yeah. I really think the Treasure T is such a big upgrade from the Treasure One though. Oh, I do as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they added support for that. Wasabi usage just keeps growing, so that's really good to see. Um, next up, this was pretty creepy. Uh, Amazon Ring, the uh, the camera, their Nest uh, product. So the cameras that you can put on your doorbells, your doors, and your house. Uh, it's basically turning into a quasi like residential surveillance system, CCTV type thing. It's so fucked up. <laughs> and the the police officers are the police departments are subsidizing it they're offering neighborhoods like discounts so that people install it in their home and they're getting access to it um yeah and a lot of times the police departments require access to it as part of the discount so you like agree to it so they just can pull so they they just have like cameras all through residential neighborhoods everywhere just like recording and connected to the internet and people are choosing to do it. Yeah, people are bringing their own demise to following the uh, the Pied Piper. But do you you don't want you don't want your community to be safe, Marty? Matthew, I do. It's just does it have to come at that cost? That weird neighbor, Marty, over there is he's he's such a creep. He doesn't he he refused to put the ring doorbell in like all the rest of us. What the hell is he fucking doing over there? That he doesn't want to put his camera in. He can't be that he just likes privacy and doesn't want people creeping on him. He's got to be doing something bad. I think we talked about this in uh, in RHR with uh, Bitcoin Sign Guy. But that I think this is one of the reasons why I think if you want real privacy in the future, you're going to have to like live in communities that focus on privacy. Yeah. No, yeah, it's like 23 in me. You, you have... The people who don't think about the consequences of those actions just diving headfirst into uh, into products that uh, basically cede their personal liberty and privacy uh, over time. Yeah, I mean, like, imagine if you you just bought like a brand new house for because you're because you were you know about to have a kid, your wife was pregnant, you just bought a brand new house, you're living there for like three months, and all of a sudden all your neighbors install cameras pointed outside their front doors, like on the streets and everything. You just automatically, your whole house is just like blanketed. And so it's not even your own choices, you know, it's what everyone else is. No. And there was another story on YouTube this week. I don't know if you saw this, not on YouTube, about YouTube where people are posting like family videos of their young kids on there. And like Google and YouTube's AIs are like picking it up and like feeding these random family videos of toddlers to people watching other really weird videos um it's like even like just posting like stuff that you do 
post on to these websites and to these these data hoarders, these data silos. Like that data is getting used and and fed to people in weird ways. There's a thread on it. Uh, there was a good thread on it on Twitter. I'll share it. It's weird. Like some random family videos are getting like 400,000 views because uh, because of Google's AI. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah. I mean, I mean, the parents should just like that's kind of on the parent. You know, the parents should just switch that to private. Yes. Um, yes. I always get kind of skeeved out by the the public online postings of children. Yeah. Yeah. Again. Just putting that in public. Just because, like, I feel like it builds a better facial recognition, too. Yeah, we're, we're, we've already talked about this. We're You're basically, like, face- doxing your kid at three or something. We're, we're face-fucked. We've already, we've already given up on that. Especially <laughs> with the ring cameras right? being installed everywhere. Um, That's fucked up. It marches on, though. Is it inevitable? Are we just going to, like, have to... No, it's not inevitable. It seems like it is, man. I think we just need more breaches. We haven't, like... We hadn't. We haven't had the proper, proper fuck ups yet. Nah. And then people will learn. Yeah, but it's coming. It's coming. There's been like I'm pretty sure like some of those, uh, not Ring in particular or Nest in particular, but some, like baby monitor, watching, tech has been like hacked and oh all those things especially like the cheaper ones and stuff are like they're some of the most pwned devices yeah. they use horrible like wireless security standards and everything yeah yeah some people are just literally live streaming their kids in their cribs and to, they have no idea to the dark net yeah because i probably know some people that are it's fucked up uh on the on the more optimistic things the initial rollout of watchtowers uh has started from Lightning Labs, Watchtowers is a uh, is been a much waited for sort of upgrade to the Lightning Network because right now uh, you sort of have to trust that people on the other side of your channels aren't stealing your Bitcoin, especially when you're offline. And the Watchtower sort of helps uh, keep everybody in check, especially if your node's prone to go offline and stuff like that. Thanks. Yep. Explain that. Yeah. That's um, yeah. It watches your channels for you if you if you go offline. Yeah. And I guess their plan is they started off free, then it's like a reward-based system, and then after that it'll be like a paid service. So people will run watchtowers, and you can run it for your friends or stuff like that, and then they they can pay you or, or you can give it to them for free. Yeah. Um, and the biggest requirement of a watchtower, besides being always online, obviously, uh, is, is a regular lightning node, but also increased storage space. Because you have to store all the channel states. That's uh. So the watchtower stores the states for you. You store it you too. Ready. Yeah. But just in case you're offline and the other party tries to maliciously close the channel it's with a, a different balance yeah. than it currently is at, um, the watchtower will intervene and do the penalty transaction. So. So just the fact that watchtowers exist should reduce the chance. Um, that anyone would even try to make the move anyway, even if it's not actually protected under watch. It kind of creates like a herd immunity. Yeah, no, it's uh, like like we said, it's something that's been waited for for a while. Lightning Labs has got out in the wild now, so slowly but surely, it's getting built out, getting more usable, uh, becoming more robust. Number of channels. I think I saw Hasu tweeting about this. The number of channels. And the uh, Lightning Network has gone down recently, but the number of nodes is going up, which is probably probably a good, healthy sign that people are creating less but bigger channels. I think Ellen Big has been uh, downsizing. Has he? Yeah. Or she? Or they? Yeah, I think it's a he, but I'm not sure. He's on Twitter. She or they is on Twitter. <laughs> um, why do you think he's downsizing? Do you know? He said on Twitter, he was like, Heads up, guys! I'm taking. You know, I'm closing this many channels. He's like, people who obviously weren't using his channels. He, he was closing their channels, doing some cleanup. And it was nice that he gave a heads up on Twitter. So he's not as nefarious as some people once thought. Yeah, no, I, yeah, I don't think he's. I, yeah, I, I don't think he's nefarious, but we shall see. Yeah. Um. 
I'm gonna go on along with second uh, second layer scaling tech this week Monday I believe. Ruben Sobson, who's based out of Seoul, he runs the Bitcoin Seoul meetup. He released his proposal for state chains, which is another second layer uh, scaling solution, sort of which complements and augments uh, Lightning Network and Liquid. It is uh, wow. How am I going to describe this? So it, it, it allows you to exchange UTXOs off chain. And uh, basically what it is, is a two of two multi-sig setup. Uh, one of the, one of the keys, which is held by a state chain entity, which is a group of people uh, that have to sign an N of M multi-sig for that one key in the two of two. So you, you would have like a, an entity of 15 people, seven of which would need to sign to, to sign the second key and then the other key would be for users and they would pass that private key along um, and the the uh, state chain entity sort of keeps track of who has the other private key at any point in the chain um, and and basically the the uh, benefit here is again you're able to to exchange UTXOs off chain yeah, this the the big thing is that it's a different layer to network. Yes, right. That's what that's what's going on. It's a proposed additional layer. Just like we have right now, we have Liquid and Lightning in operation. This would be another option. Yeah, All right, I'm pull, I'm pulling up the article now so I can uh, the ch- uh, the trade offs. Are, are different than Lightning and, and Liquid. So with Lightning, Lightning's completely trustless. Um, and where is this? Yeah, so Lightning's trustless and censorship resistant. Uh, state chains are not necessarily not tr- trustless because you need the state chain entity on the other side there. Um, right. But if the state chain entity decides not to sign the 202 multisig, you can always use their private key to get that... Uh, get that Bitcoin on chain. So it is trustless, but you always have that fail safe. You can back out. You can back out of it if it's there. Um, and another trade off with state chains is you can't easily split UTXOs like you can in lightning channels and stuff like that. Um, so this helps add to privacy um, and, and takes a little burden off of transacting on the, on the main chain as well. You can change the channels at will, right? That's one of the advantages. Yes. The channel you sizes. Pass the, you, so you just p- pass the key along yeah. at will um, if you want to. So that's cool. Interesting. And then Liquid is, is more centralized. Yeah, Liquid, obviously. Um, it's a federated model, so it's like kind of similar to like a Ripple-esque thing, but built on top of um, built on top of Bitcoin. Yeah, and, and the downside with Liquid is it's a little bit more expensive. Um, but you get the benefit of confidential transactions. Yes. Which trace. hide the balance amounts. Yeah, so it's, um, again, state chains. That sort of came out of the blue for me. Apparently, Ruben uh, presented at Breaking Bitcoin last year. This was the first time I was hearing about it. I just thought it was interesting. It's, uh, again, it's an alternative and also a, a supplementary tech to Lightning and Liquid and stuff like that. Another and tool in the toolbox. Exactly, another tool in the toolbox. It's, it's just a proposal at this point. I don't think it's been implemented. Um but it's out there. Look into it. We'll link to it. But out of all three, lightning transactions will probably cost the most. Why do you say that? Because it's it's like the most the most trust minimized and the most um, has the most value from a confidence the most standpoint. censorship resistant. Yeah. So it'll probably cost more because well, liquid definitely will cost less than lightning. Because liquid is, you know, you know they make the centralized trade off. They get more centralized and they get cheaper, um, cheaper fees in the long yeah. term. This is actually reminds me. Um, I wrote a bent last week, or no, I wrote a, I tweeted out last week about Bitmax and their, uh, their. 9 a.m. withdrawal. We've been talking about that forever. Yeah, People been, are talking about it. We've now. been talking about it forever. And Bitmex came out, and a couple of traders on Bitmex, I believe Suzu came out, and people were like, "Oh, they need to batch. They need to do all this and that." And uh, what what we've come to find is it, do, it really doesn't matter if they batch or anything. The traders on Bitmex 
are trading at such a volume that they're okay to pay point. Uh, zero one bitcoin fee just to get their money on another exchange to guarantee that it gets there so they can trade on other exchanges but uh they're bringing adding the, liquid right yeah bringing it in because they're adding liquid which will severely reduce uh that burden all the arbitrage anyone going from exchange from bitmex to another exchange won't even have to go on chain yes and their balance amounts will be hidden yeah no but it's crazy um talk, like we a lot of a lot of people like to talk quote unquote about uh like good use, good usage of the Bitcoin blockchain, and people uh, will sort of like s- say any use case is a good use case. Then they're yelling at Bitmax because they don't think they're batching, and it comes to find out it's just the traders on Bitmax like willing to pay more. Um, so maybe like the beginnings of a natural fee market developing because Bitmax give you gives you a choice of fee. Yes, I think yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I like that BitMEX sends it out at a specific time of day. I think that's just smart security practice. Um, I also, I mean, look, they said they're, they're going to do liquid. They said they're trying to, to, to go full SegWit. Um, they were one of the first, I think, to go uh, wrap SegWit, and the I, three and addresses. And this week they just, uh, their holding company or their their capital management company where they have donated to the MIT blockchain initiative um, digital currency Institute, digital right? currency digital currency Institute, Institute. Right. Um, we, that was what we had a look up last time uh, which is support which is paying to support Bitcoin core dev so shout out to, to BitMEX for that as well yeah that's pretty and the the founder that I ne- the co-founder that I never heard of before gave to the giving pledge oh really yeah the you know half your wealth by the time you die or after death i didn't i didn't see that that's awesome yeah i forget his name again it was the first time i've ever heard of him he's got great opsec you only know about arthur <laughs> right no yeah, weren't they like college i, I think isn't they ben dello i think his name was ben dello weren't they like college roommates or something or working a desk somewhere honestly i don't think anyone would have noticed this guy gave to the giving pledge but the block caught it because it was just posted on it was posted on the giving pledges website with like 17 other people that also you know super wealthy people that built i think billion i think you have to be a billionaire that has given to the pledge and they just like put like a little blog post with his picture and it didn't say anything about bitmex and the block just put the two together it was great hey the block let's just like not dox him if he wants to be like under the radar that's true be. I, I tweeted it out, so now you're making me feel bad. What the hell, Matt? You're making I'm me kidding. feel bad. Whatever, it's gonna get out there. Obviously, you, people ben. knew about it. Yeah, good for you, Ben. Yeah, that's pretty stand up act. I think that's yeah. good PR for Bitcoin. It is. No, again, we've we've blown a lot of smoke up at Mex's ass in, on this podcast before. Like, I guess again, I think they they back up what they say. And going back to the fee thing, like that's the other. Like you have a lot of a lot of people have a lot. Not you not you at the end of this this audio but people have a lot of assumptions uh about how these companies are 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 operating specifically with how they're sending their transactions and it turned out there was the users uh using the blockchain in a certain way in this case um yeah i mean they can still do some better practices but uh you can always get better yeah you can't expect everybody to be perfect at every, every given point. Exactly. Time. They're pretty good about it. Yeah. And the BitMEX research is fucking awesome. BitMEX research is dope. They're running nodes. They're testing out Lightning Network. They're testing out the uh, like the li- Lightning Network reference rate stuff just to see how much, how much money rounding nodes can make. They're, they're, they're getting their hands dirty. Yeah, our node's connected to their node. Awesome. I, uh, what I thought was uh, really funny is when I tweeted about... Um, the co-founder of Max giving to the giving pledge. Someone responded like when contribution to core devs. And then it was like an hour later, BitMEX announced that they were contributing to the digital currency Institute. Pretty funny. I didn't know, uh, digital currency Institute supports, uh, Vladimir. The, and uh, someone else. Yeah. Is it, is it Corey fields? Maybe. I think so. Yes. I'm not, I didn't, I never knew that. I never knew that, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. He was funded by MIT. Shout out to MIT. Shout out to everybody supporting Bitcoin core dives out there. Uh, oh, talking about BitMEX, Polo, who has margin oh, trading, yeah. <laughs> like right before, right, right before, before we went this, live. yeah. Um, they offer 
like the shittiest of shit coins or margin trading. I didn't even know they did this. Yeah, so Poloniex, we've talked about them before. They're one of the they were one of the kings in the 2014 altcoin casino craze. They were still big in like 2017, early 2017. Yeah, big until then. But they were yeah they got their legs in the 2014 craze and have since been pretty neutered. Uh, acquired by Circle, uh, sort of have the the regulatory shackles thrown on them here in the states in particular. And today, uh, they had some. It was scheduled maintenance, planned maintenance, planned maintenance. They went down, um, and they came out and announced that on May twenty sixth, uh, fucking eight days ago, eight days ago, due to uh, high volume and a, a excuse me, high volatility. In a just a very huge crash, huge crash in the price of clams. Have you ever heard of this token? Do you clams? know, this yeah, is? clams is like old school. Clams was one of like the first. Oh, it was the airdrop one. Yeah. That's the same clam. I'm pretty or sure. Is it a different one. This is just called clam. It's not clams. It's just clam. Oh, I'm, I'm not sure then. Uh, it might be the same one, but it's the shittiest of shit coins if it's that one. Yeah, and they're trading it on margin. They lost eighteen hundred bitcoin, in their margin lending uh, book. Ridiculous. Is ridiculous this is a highlight that shit coins are, are are highly like they make your exchange highly susceptible to losing a lot of bitcoin like you, yeah because illiquid fucking shit coin market and so then what they do is they wait eight days i guess they're trying to figure out they close the accounts of the traders that owe them money obviously they wait eight day, they while they try and get the money back they wait eight days they go down for a so-called planned maintenance they take off Five, four other shit coins, I think. They're like made ridiculous. bit shares. Is bit on sha- there. How bit shares? Are you fucking <laughs> kidding me? Made safe? Are you are you ridiculous? Brought back some memes. And then the other two. What are the other two? I don't even know who they were. I like didn't even recognize them. Those are the two I remember. Let me find them. Uh, and then they open eight days later. They go down for so-called planned maintenance. When they come back online, every, all the margin traders got a haircut of sixteen percent. It didn't matter what position you were in, if you were lending, if you were trading, whatever. Every margin user got a 16% haircut. And they said, like, if they get the users to pay them back the money, they will, they will re- you know, compensate them. Shit coining, not even once, freaks. Planned maintenance is, like, the most overused term on, on exchanges. crypto Twitter on, from the exchanges. Because... It just freaks me out every time I see it now. So it does the opposite of what they're hoping to do. Exactly. It's been used so false, like falsely so many times. No, but let's drive home the point here. Like every margin trader on that exchange was affected because they were running books on illiquid shitcoin markets. And Even if the trader wasn't participating in those. Yes. Uh, only non-US because they didn't offer margin to US users. Yes. But still. And they like said it's only 0.4 percent of users just to make you feel better about it or something. Yeah, yeah not your keys, not your coins, right? Not your keys, not your coins. And if you're building a business out there, just be war- wary. Like your threat model has to include these, especially if you're running an exchange like these illiquid markets. Uh, have to enter your threat model, and you have to weigh the opportunity cost. Is it worth it in the long run? Is it worth losing 1,800 Bitcoin? It's not. I wonder if it's not a small amount. Someone made a lot of money on this, you know. Did we talk about the uh, the Kraken, quote unquote hack? Where the Kraken didn't get hacked. Somebody's account got hacked when it when it wicked down to a hundred dollars on Kraken last week. Did we ever figure out what that was? The Bitcoin market went down to a hundred. The Bitcoin and Canadian dollar market on Kraken. Oh down. yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah. Someone said it was like. This would be if this is where this is all speculation. But that doesn't make sense to me because Kraken has KYC and they could just lock the account that got it. Someone market sold uh, a bunch of Bitcoin, so like forty five Bitcoin to crash the Canadian market, then sold allegedly sold themselves the twelve hundred Bitcoin from one account to the other account to move it. Or yeah, because there was a stink bid for twelve hundred. Bitcoin sitting at a hundred dollars. So the guy crashed the price with like 50 Bitcoin and then sold the rest to himself is the theory. Yeah. The theory is he got a hold of somebody else's account and couldn't withdraw from their account. Right. So he pulled this trick off to, to get it via the order book to send it to the other account. Yeah. But that's my problem with that theory is like Kraken could see that super easily and just lock the other account. Yeah. No, 
know. This was a Bitcoin market, a Bitcoin Canadian dollar market, which you think would be pretty liquid comparably. I mean, who's trading in Canadian dollars? You know, like that's why wouldn't you use the U.S.? Right. I feel like even. Yeah, I, I don't Maybe they don't have a lot of Canadian users. You know, this is why, like, why separate? Why, you know, sometimes fewer markets make more sense. Yes. I don't argue these two cases. Highlighted. Keep them more liquid. Yeah. Um, but I don't think, I don't know. I'm not sure about the specifics of that story. Is it Kraken or Bitstamp? We could be talking about the wrong. And Polo also has full KYC. That was Kraken. Yeah. It, it is, you were correct. That is Kraken. Um, yeah, this is the risk you take when you, you know, trade on these exchanges. That's why stacking sats is so awesome. <laughs> Just follow BTC seminars advice. Bill Burden, our old, our old hodling comrade, our 70 year old comrade. Hodling strong. But anyway, I feel like that's kind of fucked up on Polo's part. But it should be interesting to see play out because, like I said, they do have KYC, I'm pretty sure, on their users. Uh, so they they might be able to claw back some of the funds. It should be... The users? Class action? or No, uh, that's what they said. That's what Polo oh, said. they're going to go said, after the users like, hey... The users that owe the money, they're going to try and collect, you know? We'll see how that goes. Uh, ooh, this was a little under the radar this week too. I think Samurai Dojo officially uh, open yeah, source. This is huge, very very big. This has uh, been a very uh, big point of contention when people are talking about Samurai Samurai Wallet in particular because up to this point, uh, using their Dojo machine, like even using their wallet, um, you had to you, use their server. You had to use their server, which. Uh, gives up your public keys to them so and your ip until they then they instituted tor so then at least you weren't giving them your ip but you were still using their server yes and now they have dojo which allows you to run a node at home that your that your mobile wallet is then linked to um and they open sourced it and they open sourced it and they packaged it easily so you can just run it on your own hardware if you have a computer at home you can just run it or you can buy um they partnered with bitseat bit seed to sell a note in a box as well yes um so shout out to samurai team huge huge step for them they can finally get that 800 pound gorilla of people saying they're not completely trustless because of the server and yeah so if you're going to use dojo let's use it the right way and this node it's dojo's a big deal especially because they're rolling out their coin join implementation whirlpool um and it needs a place to run uh because mobile is an ideal for that so you run it on your dojo um, and then you connect back so you can have mixed funds easily in your samurai wallet like ready to go yes fucking awesome so uh it gets a little bit easier to run a node it gets a little bit easier to take your privacy into your own hands it gets a little bit easier to use bitcoin like street money as the samurai team likes to refer to it bitcoin is street money i like that framing street money yeah Bitcoin is just all the money. It is all the money. Um, and then, yeah, so, like, this is, like, the last two weeks in particular, I think, have been, like, really under-the-radar, cool uh, sort of progressions from a decentralization, uh, decentralization standpoint that you want to look for. So we have the early proposal that came out, um, which would greatly reduce the bandwidth burdens, we had uh, Gotenna and Blockstream come out with the satellite collab that they have, allowing you to use the mesh network and satellite to receive transactions and data. Uh, we had state chains that we talked about earlier. We had watch watchtowers go live. And then now um, we have Samurai Dojo, which is making it easier to be private and uh, run your own private node at your house. And now we have UtreeXO, which was also... Noddle. Noddle. We have Casa. We have Pierre's Node Launcher. But I'm talking these. What I was just describing all happened in the last like three weeks in particular. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. Yeah, and uh, and now and on top of that, UtreeXO, which uh, Thad Dry Dryja, Dryja. I, I'm not good at pronouncing. I'm pretty sure he's at MIT as well. Um, he actually covered the yeah, Lightning Network paper. Uh, he came out with the UtreeXO proposal uh, to help. Re, which would help reduce the the uh, the uh, storage burden of the UTXO set, um, so making again making it even easier to run nodes, 
and the the storage of UTXOs on your node. Less storage is less, but bandwidth is higher. Bandwidth is higher, but he believes with some accumulator tricks, it will be uh, not tricks, but use some sort of accumulation methods uh, to to make it a worthwhile trade off. The cool thing is you can implement it without a consensus change with bridge nodes. So like nodes that run the compact set and the full set at the same time. Yeah, because what it, it that's sort of the crux of it. it is it uh, it separates the, hold, the state from the, the holders device. of the Bitcoin hold most of the data. Yes, on their own side, and there's a compacted version held by the node. Um, so if so to run it without a consensus change, you would have to have a bridge node basically that had both. So if you were running a compact node, you would just connect to the bridge node. Yeah. It's interesting. Very interesting. And none of this is, or some of it is, but not all of it's foregone conclusion. A lot of it's just proposals, but it's, uh, this is, again, this is the boring shit I like to look for. And it gets me exciting because, again, if any of this is going to be worthwhile or going to happen, we need to make it so people can, I think, I'm a strong believer in that, we need people to be able to run cheap hardware to to make this dream of ideal cent- decentralization come true. Yeah, accessible. Yes. You saw somebody download a uh, Bitcoin D on uh, Nintendo Switch this week, too. Vivek. Yeah. <laughs> on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, someone was like, uh, Facebook requires $10 million to run a node. Bitcoin, hold my Switch. <laughs> <laughs> But I would never want to run a no like Ubuntu on a Nintendo Switch. Why? Well, just the touchscreen and stuff is like kind of whack. Yeah, I've like, never I've never touched a Switch. It's like great. It's a great video game console. I haven't gamed in a minute. Are we starting? A, are we starting a Twitch channel? A Twitch. <laughs> That's what uh, Tashay wants to do. Maybe we'll do it. Um, got a couple more here. Buy stocks and ETFs with Bitcoin using Abra in 150 countries. I feel like uh, this one kind of under the radar. Outside the U.S. Um, yeah. Basically every country except the U.S. if it's 150, right? Yeah, I think there's... Eh. He said 150 plus, so it must be like 151. Yeah, so that uh, Abra going global. Obviously, right? you're holding like derivatives of it or something. Yes. But you're, you're getting, getting exposure. exposure. And it's 50, 50 different tickers. Some are ETFs, some are actual companies. I think he has Amazon in there, Tesla. It should be interesting to see what the U.S. Gov thinks about this. Yeah, so starting today, investors can use Bitcoin to make fractional investments in stocks and ETFs with zero trading fees. So it's even different than Robinhood. Robinhood, you have to buy whole shares. It seems like you can only buy parts of shares here. Honestly, I could see this being like really desirable to people to outside diversify. of the U.S. How, how I don't know, is, is it... Is it difficult to buy like U.S. stocks if you're in Europe? Without a license, maybe I would imagine. I mean, I imagine it's definitely difficult in like Vietnam well, or something. If, right? they have the, if they have like a TD Ameritrade broker over there, I bet you could get access to U.S. markets through that, and I'm sure that exists. Yeah, probably. But um, I imagine this will boost accessibility for some people. You know, like in the in poorer countries or something like that. Yeah, in countries where they don't even have bank accounts, maybe they have a lot of Bitcoin. They want to diversify into stocks. Probably not, though. It's not the. I'm just like trying to think of the target market. I don't know. It's these are the these are kind of cool things that you can enable with Bitcoin because it's just a better money. Um, but because it's a centralized company, there's going to be. I'm not sure, like. If if the U.S. government was fine with this, then we would already be able to, you know, people across the world would be able to trade in U.S. stocks with, like, PayPal or whatever their payment method is. Yeah. Yeah. So and we'll see uh, We'll see what the U.S. government thinks about this, too. It's been, but Abra's been getting away with this sort of stuff for years now. Not getting away with. They've been doing it successfully. Um but not like this. I feel like this is a little bit more brazen. Yeah, I'm not sure. Hmm. I don't know. I have like, I strangely just have, I have like no opinion about Abra. Never used their product. 
I like just there's no negative opinion of it. I have no positive opinion for it. I'm the same way. We got to get Bill in the studio. I was lined up to speak with him the last time I was in San Francisco, but uh, we had to reschedule. Hoping to get that rescheduled soon. Um, so we'll we'll pick his brain about that. I am the same way. I'd uh, admittedly uh, have never used it and same very neutral feelings. Like what is going on at Abra? Um, last topic of the day. It seems as though the alarm bells are going off in the uh, in the U.S. economy, and the Fed governors are starting to posture that it may be time to cut rates again. Uh, so that's what I wrote about in the bent today. Wanted to touch on it here, rabbit hole recap. It's uh, something to look at. We kept rates below 25 bips for seven years, hitting a low of seven bips at one point. We have since raised them since 2016 from uh, about around 25 bips. We've gotten all the way up to 2.24%, I believe. So 224 bips. And now it seems that the interest rate will not go much higher as the trade war. There's always an excuse. Uh, the Bullard from the St. Louis Fed came out earlier this week and said due to the trade wars and um, fears of the, the uh, sort of fallout of that, it may we may see a, a rate cut in the f- in the near future. Um, Do we know like, how much? Whew. I don't know. I would I would ponder. It probably start with like ten to fifteen bips, fifteen to twenty maybe. And then just keep going down. Just keep going down, depending on how it reacts. I mean, we've talked about it for a while. Like I, I wrote about it last week too. The macro landscape. We this was this happened after we talked last week with Deutsche Bank. Stock hitting all-time lows, like heading to penny stock territory. It was below $6 at one point. And at the same time, the German 10-year bond was negative. So you have Germany's number one bank and their 10-year somewhat long-term bond duration negative. So anybody who bought a German bond last Friday was expected to immediately lose money on that. Um, That's fucking crazy. Yeah. And so it seems like there's... There's warning bells going off in the world economy, not just the U.S. The Fed posturing is probably not only looking at the trade war. They say they call it, they blame it on the trade war, but obviously there's other things going on beyond the trade war. Uh, another thing to look at is a lot of big fund managers are getting uh, rede- redemption calls. There was one uh, historic fund manager. Let me see if I can pull this up real quick. I don't have it here, but um, but if they if they cut rates, like everything will just get extended, right? It will. Well, that's the question. So, for the last thirty years, excuse me, forty years on this shit, since the nineteen eighties, the Fed funds rate, which is the rate we're talking about here, has hit lower highs and lower lows on its way to close to zero. Which so between twenty oh eight and right. twenty sixteen, we were close to zero for that for that almost 10 years and now before that the 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 fed funds rate reached a peak of like around six percent like in oh five oh six uh but we'll never like now if we keep going down the question is do, will we ever go back above 2.5 and will we go down below zero so that's the question is do we break the x-axis this you time never around? go back up it's a, if you look at the chart, it seems like, yeah, it's maybe just crash the markets, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, you, essentially, you want to be able to pay back the interest owed on the debt after a certain point because the liabilities become too much. So that's so we're heading in. It seems as though I'm going to ring the bell here. It seems as though we're heading towards another easing cycle and rates are going to drop. And again, like I said, last time, the low that they dropped to was seven bips, seven basis points. Can't get much lower than that. And I've been harping about the normalization of NERP in the mainstream, the IMF, the ECB, uh, Ken Rogoff, you name them. They're all slowly but surely trying to normalize NERP. Get rid of cash. (laughs) Yeah. Well, with cashless societies. Well, they've even figured out how to tax your cash to make NERP happen with, like, a cash society. Maybe Libra is the answer. I don't know, dude. Maybe Facebook is going to create... The one world currency backed by a bunch Z- of world currencies. Is Zuck the much maligned, misunderstood tech leader is here to save the world? 
I think it all really comes down to whether or not they call it Libra or Global Coin. Like, if they call it Libra, then it has like a real shot here. You could pull it off. If they call it Global Coin, like it's fucking dead in the water. It's a horrible name. What if they just completely go right field and just call it Face Coin? Face Coin, Coin Face, Coin Face. I'd be, I'd be about Coin Face, Coin Face, um, Coin Face, me, bro. So, so some more details leaked about Facebook's coin, upcoming coin. Ten mil a node, bro. Yeah, ten million a node. They're aiming for a hundred nodes. Now, what's interesting is the source is the information. dot com. Is the information like a magazine or a newspaper or something? It's a uh, internet. It's a- it's a newsletter, but a very high-end newsletter. Okay, so the information got this leak, according to f- people familiar to the matter. Um, $10 million per node, targeting 100 nodes, so that's a billion dollars. And then they use that billion dollars to back the coin. The basket of stuff. Currencies and stocks. Um, n- it didn't make clear... If- they call it a licensing fee, so I met, they're paying ten million dollars a year. Is my guess, right? It's not just a one-time. A licensing fee seems like something that will be paid again in the future. D- yeah, is it one time? No one, no. Like I don't like. How do they add to the backing, right? Are they so if they do ten million a year, and then we don't know how the token is issued, so they might, it might be ten million, but then you get issued ten million in the token at current market value or whatever. Depending and then on. every year you add another ten million. So it's not maybe it's not a true stable coin. Like it's not pegged to the dollar, but it's it's like it's got a float. It's like a stable coin in the more true sense of the word, and that it holds a basket of shit. I don't want to call that a stable coin either. I know, but you know, I'm saying like in a theoretical like the the those the theoretical economists like well, that's what f- favorites isn't that what banker was all about or basis no it's banker yeah that's what i'm talking about shit like that yeah so banker was like one of the biggest ICOs at the time 2017 it was one of those summer 2017 ICOs that slowed down the ethereum chain but that was their their idea but it would be a basket of cryptocurrencies but they i believe they eventually wanted to extend into commodities and and traditional markets as well yeah, I mean, I mean, Maker does backs it by just Ethereum, mm-hmm. and they peg it to a dollar, right? This seems a little bit different because it's a basket. I don't know, you know, I, I and and the, how that how the licensing fee for the node is paying for the basket is is an interesting move, you know. I don't. Once you buy a node and pay the licensing fee, do you have? Are you able to dictate or vote for how the chain like we've never seen a, we've never seen a stable coin with its own chain before right no so and it's not just money in a bank account do we think Facebook can pull this off like when you issue new tether you you give them money this is theoretically or like when you get Gemini USD you give them money then they print more Gemini USD and they send it to you and put the money in the bank account. It's like super easy to add more to the supply to keep it in the peg. But how do you do that with a basket? And if it's 10 million licensing fees every year and they're adding that into the basket, then you, right? Wouldn't you, like, how do you dictate what the supply is? We don't know what the supply is going to be. Yeah, because you'd be forced to go invest in new markets, right? But you could deploy a billion dollars a year, essentially, right? And... And yeah, what do you deploy that in? Well, we already see how like do do, how do you decide that? Don't we already see central like isn't the bank central bank of Japan like buying equities and stuff? Yes, yeah, well, central bank of Japan owns seventy five percent of the Japanese ETF market. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's kind of like that, right? So this is just gonna be Facebook just buying up the like a separate Fed almost. Yeah. See, I think it comes down to so it obviously doesn't compete with Bitcoin because it's gonna have no censorship resistance whatsoever. But it is going to have strict KYC because Facebook already knows everything about you. So it's, they're perfect for it. Um, and they have like this quasi decentralization, like this photo, fo- like a hundred nodes. Um, so, so maybe the, you know, maybe the U S government will look at them favorably and be like this, maybe this will hurt Bitcoin, even though I don't think it'll hurt Bitcoin. Maybe it'll complement Bitcoin. Even maybe they'll turn a blind eye and let it happen. But if the U S government 
nips this in the bud, then they just can't even do anything. They can't even launch it to begin with. You know, that's the uh, the big question is the, the Cambrian explosion of private currencies making its way into the tech world. And will the U.S. government put up with it? And then even if the U.S. government lets them, they still will have to probably fight with all the individual countries to even allow their users access. Yeah, obviously, India is not a fan. Yeah. Um, oh, Facebook's coming in with their own, you know, currency. Interesting. I'm excited to watch it play out. I really hope they choose Libra. I'm looking forward to Libra the standard. Are the rumors that they partnered with the Winkle Vibes for this true? Is that a rumor too? I didn't hear that. There's uh, no way. Of course he's like launching a coin right after they launch their stable coin or whatever. And he's naming it Libra after Gemini. <laughs> I hope he la- names it Libra. Yeah. Supposedly in the source, they were like talking about how everyone at Facebook has like open floor plans and stuff. And the whole Libra team is like in locked offices that you can only get if you have special permissions and stuff. Hey, if you're on the Libra team, you want to talk, hit us up. He might, he might just, yeah, he might just be bored and just going for it, man. Risking it for the biscuit. We'll see. Uh, in my opinion, Facebook does not have the best uh, brand value right now on the market. It's got a black eye, if you will. Nah, the big one's WhatsApp, and it's got great fucking brand value. It's true. That is true. And Instagram. It probably shouldn't, but it does. Yeah. And WhatsApp is the developing world's messenger, yeah. man. Oh, I worked I worked for a company based out of Ecuador like five or six years ago, and that's the only way we communicated was exactly. WhatsApp. Exactly. Yeah. That's the killer. That's the killer for their for their coin, at least, I think. Yeah. Um, you build the wallet right into the app. They already have the phone installed on there. And then you pay off merchants to accept the shit with your $1 billion war chest a year. Yeah. Just think. Think of who you want to cede this control to, freaks. Do you want Facebook controlling this currency? Do you want Mark Zuckerberg controlling the currency of the future? Or do you want an apolitical, uncontrollable currency like Bitcoin? Oh, I saw a fun conspiracy theory. Let's rip it. Um, So, fuck. Is it GPDR or is it GDPR? Dread Pirates? No, no, no. The regulation in... Oh, GDPR. GDPR. uh, In Europe was the privacy regulation um, that said Facebook couldn't do a bunch of stuff unless the user opted in. So, a bunch of users all got opted out of a bunch of Facebook stuff, right? But now that they're launching this token, they're going to probably give it to their users for free. And they'll say to them, you know, to, to get the token, you have to opt into all the shit. And then once they go on a public blockchain, Facebook isn't directly collecting the data. They're just observing the blockchain, like along with the other nodes so they can get around the regulation. Financial panopticon being developed right in front of our eyes, people. Be aware. Just be aware. Just be aware. <laughs> Just be aware. It's happening. It's inevitable. And again, like you said, it, uh, it does not compete with Bitcoin, in my opinion. But it will I'm be not at all. It will be interesting to see if um, if it gains traction, and if so, how quickly, and if so, do they get into trouble with the government? Yeah, I mean, I'd be really worried if if I if I like owned bags of centralized shit coins. Like, why would why is someone going to use Ripple? Um, if they have this, and it'll probably be even cheaper than Ripple. Yeah. And, and everyone already has WhatsApp. Yeah. Yeah. Just things to ponder. Also, something to ponder. This is the 31st anniversary, I believe, of the Tiananmen Square massacre. That was this week, 31 years ago. Um, Patrick Chanovich is somebody who, who documents that every year. I'll share a link to that. Um, but, it's, again, it's like something. It's why we're in Bitcoin, trying to avoid... The digital panopticon. Uh, yeah, you still can't search it in China. Still can't search it in China. You get blocked from WeChat if you post about it. Yeah. Um, so trying to avoid that situation. Just be aware. Be aware of all these things. That's why we're here. Shout out to our one contributor. Uh, donation of the week for $100. Some ra- uh, Not random. So an anonymous donator. Shout out to you. <laughs> we have no idea who it is. Yeah. And uh, thank you for everybody using the dime bag. That's so fucking cool. I wonder if it's because we said last time that we loved that we could just get anonymous donations and have no idea who it was. Yeah. Hey, it's still, it's still possible. 
privacy conscious donation. TFTC.io slash contribute. If you guys want to get a shout out on here, buy us a bottle of whiskey, just throw us a hundo. We're accepting. Um, and every contribution goes a long way. This stuff's getting expensive with the newsletter, the website hosting, getting more gear for this stuff. It's not cheap, especially as it gets more popular, which is a good problem to have. Yeah. I mean, look, we're flying to San Francisco. Yeah. Oh, yeah. TFTC 25 for the Bitcoin 2019 conference. I'm so excited for that. Yeah. So we're going to be there. Fucking rooftop, man. We're gonna, yeah, we're going to be doing an episode live in person. And again, the first one we did on January 3rd was bumping. I think we had like 60 people there. We were like at the bottom of the market. Yeah. Um, even even so, it was just great vibes. With the live shows, we like to make it interactive. So we'll have you freaks throw some topics at us. We'll riff on them. It's more of a conversation with you guys than, uh, than us pontificating between each other. Yeah, I think we're going to have like guests cycling. Yeah. It'll be good. It'll be fun. We'll all get drunk. Yeah. Um, that's all we got this week, freaks. You got anything else, Matt? Um, what was the sign off I gave at the last live show? When you tuck your kid in <laughs> that night, just ask yourself, do I have enough Bitcoin? You don't want your kid to look at you in 10 years and say, daddy, how come we don't have any Bitcoin? <laughs> Hopefully you don't have to say people are mean to me on Twitter. <laughs> Peace and love, freaks. Cheers.